Some time ago, I made a video showing how to train a custom voice with Piper using Google Colab. Since then, the notebook must have changed, as people reported that it no longer worked. There must be a different way to run the notebook now than what was needed to run it when I created the video. So I decided to give it a try again. But when I went to the GitHub page, I noticed it mentioned that development had moved to a new repository. This is the new repository. It is called Piper1-GPL. I found this comment from the developer saying there are plans for a Piper 2. This new Piper GPL repository has instructions for training. You should be able to use these instructions for local training on Linux or WSL for Windows. This is what I used to create the Colab we will be using in today's video. Here is the Colab notebook I created. I will leave a link in the description. You can click open in Colab to launch it. First thing you will want to do is click on connect on the top right to connect to a T4 GPU. The free version of Colab has limits on the GPU usage, so it might not always be available. You can run the first node to confirm that Tesla T4 GPU is available for use. It will print out the information for the GPU that is connected in the environment. The real setup begins with the next cell, cell number one, where we install the system packages and eSpeak. When that finishes, we can go on to cell number two, which will clone the repository and go into the working directory of the repository. Next, cell number three will install the Piper application with the training code. When that finishes, go on to cell number four, where it runs the monotonic align shell script. Say that five times fast. Monotonic align shell script. 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 When that finishes, go on to cell five, where we install some more dependencies and run another setup script. Once the two cells for step five are run, cell number six mounts our Google Drive so that we can upload and use our audio files for training. Run the cell and click connect to Google Drive. Once that finishes, you can click on that folder icon to see the contents of your connected Google Drive. There is a folder called Drive and one inside it called My Drive. Next, let's upload our files. Click the three dots next to my drive and first create a new folder called TTS underscore data. We basically want the path to match what is defined in the data root variable in the next cell. Within the TTS underscore data folder, we will create another folder called my voice. And within that my voice folder, create a folder called waves. This will be where we have all of our audio files. For this video, I will just use 20 audio files that I have currently on my local machine. On my machine, I have these 20 files stored in a folder called Waves. And outside of that folder, I also have a metadata.csv file. This metadata.csv file just contains the transcript of the audio in each of the Wave files in the Waves folder. The transcript was generated using this Python script. I will leave a link to this script. The usage of this script is the same as was shown in the previous video using whisper speech to text. Click the three dots next to the Waves folder and click Upload. Depending on how many files you have, it might take a while. For this example, I only have 20 files. Next, click on the three dots next to my voice and upload the metadata.csv file. And now, finally, let's run cell 7 to set the variables to our folder paths. Step 8 is just a sanity check to make sure we can see the eSpeak library and that our CSV contains transcript for at least the first five files. And now we are ready to start the actual training. Run cell 9 to kick off the training. It will use an existing Piper checkpoint to basically fine tune an existing model. As the training goes on, you will be able to see information about what epoch it is currently at. By the way, if you notice that number next to the cell, this is actually cell 13 and not cell 9. I have been calling them cell instead of step, so pardon any confusion that might have caused. Some steps have multiple cells, so that is why the cell count is not in sync with the step count. This is step nine, the training. You can let this run for however long you like, and when you are satisfied, you can just click the stop button to stop the cell. It keeps a checkpoint with each epoch, so you will have the trained checkpoint file with each epoch. 
The checkpoint being used is at Epoch 2164, so this training will start at Epoch 2165. I am going to skip ahead. Okay, you have just jumped forward in time. It is now at Epoch 2169. If we want to see where it is storing the checkpoints with each epoch, we can go to the Lightning Logs folder. It is in the folder we get clones. Notice it has a version zero and inside a checkpoints folder, which contains the checkpoint file of the train model. Checkpoint file name is 2169. Currently the training is on epoch 2170. Once the epoch 2170 finishes, the model file name will get updated and changed to 2170. Okay, it was at Epoch 2173, and I decided to stop the training. So we have a checkpoint of Epoch 2172. Next, let's click on the three dots next to the checkpoint and click Copy Path and paste it in the checkpoint path in the next cell where we will export it to an Onyx file and then run the next cell to generate the Onyx model file. Once that finishes, you can find the Onyx file at the root folder. So collapse all of the open folders to see the file. And finally, we can run the very last cell to copy over the corresponding config file to the root as well. And now we can simply download these two files and use them with Piper. I'm going to test them out with the Piper UI application I wrote a while back. These are the two files that got downloaded to my downloads folder. It looks like I have a bunch of existing model files in my custom folder already. I am just going to move the new model files into this custom folder. We can rename these to whatever we want. Just remember to rename both the Onyx file and the JSON file to the same name, whatever you decide to name it. And now we can select the new voice from the custom dropdown and test it out. Let's try with this text. This is all wrong. Yay, we are done. Well, that is about it. I just wanted to try out the Google Colab Notebook method of Piper training in 2025, and it looks like now we have a new repository for Piper and we'll potentially be getting a Piper 2 in the future. Anyways, that is all for now. Enjoy.